Now that we've gone over some of the theory required to build a custom renderer, let's go ahead and write some code and see how things play out. If you'd like to follow along, you can grab the code from GitHub, it'll be a link in the description, or you can go ahead and just install these modules independently and start writing code. We're starting with a completely fresh repository with no code at all, so it'll be very easy to follow along. I have a single file which is index.ts, which contains absolutely nothing, so let's go ahead and start writing some code and see what happens. The first thing we need to do is import some things from view, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to need the create renderer function. We're going to grab compile while we're here to compile our template. We're going to grab define component to define our component, and that should be enough for now. So let's go ahead and see how our renderer might look. The first thing I'm going to do is just say and create my renderer. It's going to return a function called create app, which is what we use to mount our application. And we're going to say create renderer in here. This is going to require some arguments called node ops as we discussed earlier. So I'm just going to pass those in before I create them. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and define what we're going to do for our MVP, our minimal implementation. I'm going to create a new application here or a new app, and that's going to be a new component, and it's just going to render something very simple to let us get started. Because we haven't got the, the, uh, the runtime here, we're going to have to use compile to compile our template. I have imported that one from view, and that's just going to take a string. I'd like to use templates here, just because I think it's a bit easier to read. And we're going to start off with a very simple one. We're going to have view, it's going to contain text, and that's just going to say some text. And that's all we're going to have to do. And this is going to give us enough of a challenge to see something interesting as we go ahead and start developing. Now that we have that, we should be able to do something like this. We're going to say const app is equal to create app and pass in our application. And then hopefully we're going to say app.mount and pass in the root node. This would normally be document. We're not obviously going to have a document in this case. So we're going to have to make do with something else for now. I'm just going to pass in an empty object. The final error we have to get rid of before we could run this is going to be creating the node operations. And as we saw, those can be defined in this kind of similar way as they are defined in the runtime renderer for the DOM inside of Vue 3 source code. Just to save a little bit of time, I have prepared something earlier. I'm just going to copy this one over and then explain how it works. Let's go ahead and paste it in here. The first thing we have is this node op function. I just implemented this because we don't need to implement the full set of node operations, just a minimal subset. And we're going to have this one just to warn us if we've forgotten to implement one. If we jump down here, we can see we have our node operations. It looks like we need to import renderer options here. And this has two generic arguments, which we're going to talk about in the near future. I've gone ahead and put some console logs just to show you what's happening. We have the patch prop function, the insert function, the create element function, and create text. And the rest of these are going to be no operations. If they do happen to execute, we're going to throw an error, and that's going to give us a hint that we've made something, uh, made a mistake. If you were to implement a much more complex renderer, chances are you would need to implement all of these, but we're doing something fairly simple just for a little demonstration. Now that we've implemented node ops, we actually have no compilation errors, so we can go ahead and run this and see what happens. Just going to scroll up to the top to make sure we have a good idea of what we're looking at when we render everything. Let's head back to my terminal and I'm just going to run yarn ts node on index.ts and execute my very simple custom renderer. We are getting error as expected, so let's scroll up and see what's going on. We actually have a few very useful logs as well. You can see it's saying we have not resolved the text element or the view element. That does make perfect sense. We are trying to use the view element and text element here, neither of which exists. And then we have some interesting console logs, and this is doing exactly what we would expect it to do. To create this, this uh, structure here, what we need to do is first create the view element, then the text element, then the sum text node, and then we need to insert them all into inside of each other. So you can see here we've created the view element that is console logged if I scroll down here a little bit. It's saying create element view. We're then doing create element text, and that's going to be this one up here. We're then creating the text, so sum text, and then we're calling insert and we're inserting some text, which is a child that's going to be here, and it's going to be inserted inside of this text element. We are then getting an error. It's saying uh, object.define property called on a non-object. And the problem here is our create element and create text functions are not actually returning the elements like they should be. They're just doing a console.log. If we head over to our view three source code, we can see their create element function is actually going to return a new element using document.createElement in this case. We haven't got a similar API for our PDF kit renderer, so we're going to have to figure out our own. So what I'm going to do is spend a little bit of time defining all the different nodes we're going to be using here. This is a little bit boring, but it is definitely worth having very strongly typed nodes as we're going to see in the near future. I'm going to go ahead and create my very base node, and this is going to be called a PDF node. 
All it's going to do is have an ID, and this is going to let us easily identify it later on, and we're going to see if that's going to be a fairly useful thing to be able to do. I'm just going to create a random number here and round it to zero decimal places, and this is going to be our minimal node that we're going to extend from. The next thing we're going to do is define our text node, and that's going to represent our plain old text, in this case, some text. I'm going to call that one PDF text node, and as such, it is going to extend the PDF node class. So let's go ahead and extend PDF node. We're going to have to have some way to initialize text here. So I'm just going to have a, uh, a value. Let's actually call it text. It is going to be a string. And then we're going to jump in here and have a constructor that's going to take a value as the string as the first argument. We're going to call super and then just say this.text is equal to value. The next element we're going to need to define is going to be this text element here as well as this view element. And we're also going to have one more element. It's going to be a document element, and that's going to be the very root node, much like document is the very root of any HTML document. The next thing we're going to do, of course, as we said, is the text element. So I'm going to say class PDF text element, or actually let's just start with the base element. I'm going to say PDF element, and that one is going to extend a PDF node. It's not going to do anything, but PDF text element is going to do something. It's going to extend the PDF element class for now, and we're actually not going to have any extra implementations here. We're going to then go ahead and create the view element as well. And finally, we're going to create the document element, which is going to be the very root of the entire PDF document. Now that we have all of these classes, we can go ahead and actually update our typings on our renderer. Let's just jump down here and do that. You can see I'm doing any any up here. Now I can pass in my PDF node. I'm going to call it PDF nodes actually. And then we're going to have a group here called PDF elements. And that's just going to be all the different elements and all the different nodes available. At the moment, we only have one set of nodes available. Let's go ahead and define that now. I'm going to define it up here under all the rest of them. We're going to say type of PDF nodes. And at the moment, we only have one that's going to be the PDF text node. We're going to do something for the PDF elements that's going to be similar as well. PDF elements, and that's going to be the PDF text element, uh, PDF text element, there we go, or the PDF view element. Or finally, we're going to have the PDF document element. And this is going to give us better, better typing. You can see now I have two warnings or two errors in the side of my IDE. And that's saying the create text element or the create text node operation should return a new text element. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is jump down here and instead of returning text, we're going to return a new PDF text node. And that's going to pass in the value. In this case, it's going to be text and the warning or the error is now gone. Let's go ahead and fix up the other error that we're having as well. And that's going to be down here. Root is supposed to be an element type. I'm just going to create a new PDF document element here. And that's going to get rid of most of our problems. We do actually have one more error, although it's not been identified. And the reason for that is because I've typed this as any, which is actually incorrect. If I go ahead and delete this, we are going to get that warning now. We need to return an element here. And what we're going to do is return a different element depending on this tag. So let's go ahead and say if tag is triple equal to view, we're going to return a view element. So I'm just going to say return new PDF view element. And we're going to do something very similar in here for the text element as well. I'm just going to check against text and say PDF text element. Finally, if we actually get to this point, uh, which should be impossible, we're just going to throw an error. So I'm going to say throw error and we're going to say it's an illegal tag name. So I'm going to say illegal tag and pass in the tag. Finally, I'm going to remove this one to the top just for some nice extra logging. Let's go ahead now and try this out. It was quite a bit of work, but hopefully it's going to be worth it down the track when our PDF renderer gets much more complex. So remember here we got this error. Let's go ahead and try it out. So one thing we should note before we go ahead is up here, we're seeing that parent is undefined and that's not going to be the case anymore. If I scroll down here, we are getting those same warnings because we haven't created those elements. That's exactly what I expected, but we are getting a little bit more uh, further down the path here. We created the view element. Let's just scroll up and see that text. We have the view element, the text element, we're creating some text, and then we can actually insert successfully here. And previously parent was undefined. Now it is defined. We can have this text node here, which is going to represent this text inside of here. We then have the text element, which is the parent, and that's exactly what we expected here. And then we're trying to insert again. In this case, it's going to be the text element inside of the view element. That's the text element to the view element. And then we have one final insertion, which is going to be the view element, which is the root node inside of the global root, which is going to the PDF document element. And the PDF document element of the, is of course the one we created down here when we passed it into our, our app.mount function. 
We have made a lot of progress here. We have got a lot of work to do though, but we've definitely set ourselves up for success by successfully defining all the node operations, as well as defining some classes to keep our code in line and compiling. The next thing we need to do is figure out how to generate the tree-like structure. We haven't got any children uh, parent relationships at the moment, and that's what we're going to explore in the next lecture.